What's happening at the border is not a crisis. A crisis is a flood in Bangladesh. It's an act of God. This is an intentional act. This is the administration bringing felons, violent criminals, into our country on purpose. Why would you do something like that only to destroy it? I mean, there's, there's, there's no other explanation for this. It's not an act of compassion. It's an act of hostility against the United States in order to change it forever. I think this is the greatest scandal of my lifetime, what's happening on the border right now. The crisis on our southern border didn't happen overnight. It was a long time in the making. Our country has long served as a beacon of hope for migrants from around the world. A land of opportunity, millions flock to the United States each year in search of a better life. Overwhelmed by mass immigration from Europe and Asia, the United States began enacting immigration restrictions in the late 1880s. These restrictions were intended to protect American jobs and taxpayers, limiting laborer entry and denying entry to those unable to support themselves. Since then, illegal immigration has plagued the United States, reaching crisis levels on our southern border in recent decades. Today, there are anywhere between 10.5 and 12 million illegal immigrants living in the United States. Prior to 2015, politicians from both parties in Washington had expressed concern over illegal immigration and the state of our southern border. I voted for a fence. I voted, like, unlike most Democrats, and some of you won't like it, I voted for 700-mile fence. And let me tell you something, folks. People are driving across that border with tons, tons, hear me, tons of everything from byproducts from methamphetamine to cocaine to heroin. It's all coming up through corrupt Mexico. It will authorize some badly needed funding for better fences and better security along our borders. We have a responsibility to secure our borders. This bill will help protect the American people. This bill will make our borders more secure. It is an important step toward immigration reform. Secure our borders with technology, personnel, uh, physical barriers if necessary in some places. Not only in the states most heavily affected, but in every place in this country are rightly disturbed by the large numbers of illegal aliens entering our country. That's why our administration has moved aggressively to secure our borders more. It is wrong and ultimately self-defeating for a nation of immigrants to permit the kind of abuse of our immigration laws we have seen in recent years, and we must do more to stop it. Things changed in 2015, when then-candidate Trump made border security a key platform of his campaign. But we're building the wall. It's the most powerful and comprehensive border wall structure anywhere in the world. Just so you know, we're building the wall anyway. We're going to build the wall. We have no choice. This barrier is absolutely critical to border security. It's also what our professionals at the border want and need. This is just common sense. The border wall would very quickly pay for itself. Democrats flipped on the issue and refused to acknowledge the crisis on our border with Mexico. They called President Trump racist and xenophobic for wanting to secure the border, a plan that enjoyed wide bipartisan support less than a decade ago. A wall is an immorality. It's not who we are as a nation. No, it has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with the wall is an immorality between countries. It's an old way of thinking. While politicians in Washington fight over border security, the men and women of border control work around the clock to keep our citizens, our communities, and our country safe. Like a Wednesday.
Wednesday or so, we had about 4,000 people under the bridge. And in the span of the next four days, it went from 4,000 to 15,000 people crossing in one stretch of the river that's maybe half a mile long or so, give or take. And it was, what we, find, what we see a lot of times with these, with these large crossings is the word spreads. Word spreads amongst the community that now is the time to cross in this certain place. So as word started spreading that Del Rio is the area to go, every Haitian who was able to get there started crossing because they knew that at that point that if they crossed the river illegally, uh, they were going to be allowed or likely to be allowed to stay in the country. We had, we had a, a couple children turn up drowned in the river recently. Um, it's, that's just what we know of because their bodies turned up. But there are plenty that drown and we never know about it. You hear a lot in the news about people saying that uh, there's a caravan coming uh, to California or here, there, and everywhere. The reality is here in the Rio Grande Valley, uh, we would see the equivalent of multiple caravans a week and at times uh, upwards of 2,000 per day just at one station, which is in itself the equivalent of, of a caravan. It's gotten to the point where we have, uh, just behind me you have this card table and we, we've had to set up little places like this along the river so that we could do the, the initial processing of the people right here in the field. It would normally be thought that people that were seeking asylum would come to a port of entry and ask for asylum legally, but they don't do that. The main reason that they don't do that is because the criminal cartels that control all smuggling in this area, they force the asylum seekers to cross the border across the Rio Grande River about a mile from here. The reason that the cartels force them to do that is because they know that it will cause our resources to be deployed to those areas where they're crossing large groups of people. We pull agents out of the field, which then creates artificial gaps in our coverage, which allows the cartels to cross their higher value products, such as opioids or even criminal aliens, into the United States. Women are being raped on a daily basis by the cartel. We had a woman we caught the other day, a couple months ago, um, I don't remember if she was in Mexico or Guatemala. She had a baggie of pills in her bag and about 50 pills, and we said, what are those pills for? And she said, well, when I was gonna cross the border, I knew that I would get raped multiple times. These are morning after pills. Just a couple hundred yards from here, we have the Mexico-US border. This area had been extremely notorious for the amounts of drugs that are entering the country. You will hear many times that the drugs don't stay here on the actual border towns. And that is 100% correct. What happens is, and what everyone out there needs to truly understand is, these drugs like black tar heroin, methamphetamines, and fentanyl that are crossing into the United States border in these very areas are going into suburban America, affecting our kids in our junior highs and our high schools. The state of our border is not secure. I know that everybody likes to believe that it's a, a made-up crisis. It's not a made-up crisis. It's never, it's never been a made-up crisis. It's something that's been real. It's something that uh, people just kind of hide for the real American people. The people that live in the middle of the country, the people who live in the northern part of the country, they're not aware of what we see every day. I personally have a, a, a brother that's here in McAllen. He sees this stuff every day. And he, pretty much the same thing. We'll tell you the same thing that I'm sitting here and telling you, that this border is not secure. The media would have you believe, or those that are pro-immigration would have you believe that this is about immigration. And it's not. This is about human trafficking and drug trafficking into America. There's not a single person that comes across this border that there's not some connection to the cartels where the cartel is profiting uh, from trafficking humans and drugs into this country. If the cartel would drop a bomb on one of our cities and kill 100,000 people, uh, we'd steamroll the country. But because that's not how they're doing their warfare, they're just, they're infiltrating our communities one pill at a time, the mainstream media and the politicians don't talk about it. But the reality is the biggest war we're facing right now is on our southern border 
with the amount of humans being trafficked in here from who knows what countries with who knows what intentions. In the last year, we have lost over 100,000 American civilian lives. Women, children, teenagers, babies, grandparents, all poisoned by fentanyl and other dangerous opiates. To them, it's just an open border from Washington, D.C. To us, it's cleaning up the messes that this open border policy brings to our doorstep. Whether it's criminals for other countries, criminal behavior from, from people who don't care about America, who take advantage of our systems or our, of our communities, or whether it's drugs coming in and killing off our loved ones. It is, no matter how you slice it up or how you present it, it's unacceptable. And we need to do a better job of presenting the emotional side of it and how it's ruining families across the country. And albeit there are a lot of good people that are trying to come to this country, there are also a lot of criminals. I hear all too often people say, oh man, you guys have it rough in Texas or Arizona. But most Americans don't realize what happens in my backyard today will be in your front yard tomorrow. This product, both the human beings and the drugs, are not designed to stay here in Arizona. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're in some trouble. Like, this fentanyl is going to kill a lot of people. It's not about humanitarianism. It's, it's about people smart enough to know where they're going. And the, the cartel has given these people false hope of how easy it is to get to Phoenix or Denver or New York even. But, and they don't, they don't care. It, it's a commodity. It's a product. They're getting $6,000 a head now to bring them in illegally. So, you know, there's a lot of money involved in this. And that, that's what the border's become is, uh, it's not about immigration anymore, it's about smuggling. And smuggling leads to power and money. And uh, America can't seem to figure that out. They think it's a humanitarian crisis. So what Border Patrol agents do is they look for disturbances in the ground. It's called sign cutting. They're looking for footprints. And what we'll, what we'll do is we'll follow these footprints if the cameras um, have lost sight of the individuals. We'll follow these footprints and we'll actually track um, the narcotic smugglers and the illegal aliens. Because the, the cartels have evolved so much, they've started to wear these carpet shoes where they'll put them on and they'll walk through the desert with these carpet shoes and these shoes will not leave any, they will not leave any tracks um, in the ground at all, which then makes it much more difficult for us to find them. Um, again, leading to why walls are so necessary. As long as we can keep people from crossing the border, we can control the border and we can get rid of all of the tactics that the uh, cartels and drug smugglers are using. right down south of where we're at, you can see where a new wall was constructed. That wall has been extremely effective for this area. When I worked here, um, I used to chase people through this area on a daily basis. I would catch uh, both narcotics and uh, illegal aliens that were being smuggled into the United States on a daily basis. Since that wall went up, we have dropped down, our, the apprehensions in this area has dropped down to nearly nothing. We, we basically do not have any traffic through here at all anymore. So you can see absolutely how effective these physical walls are. Where a wall comes in is it's obviously, it's not a, a, a one-stop, you know, one-stop shopping. It's gonna give you everything you need. It's more like a, 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 PO, a tool in your toolbox. It's your hammer, but you also need other tools to go along with it. It is very good for, for uh, force multiplying, um, it, it, it acts as a funnel point to get people where we want them to go so that it's easier for us to apprehend them and safer for us to apprehend them for us, for them, and for the, the general public. Um, this is the way that we have worked for years um, and it's proven to be very effective. As we've gotten more technology, more cameras, more walls, more sensors, um, it's, it's allowed us to determine where these individuals are. Uh, the brush is very thick and it's very easy for them to hide in the brush which will then make it more difficult for us to follow their footprints or what we call their sign. Um, 
but as long as we have the, the proper resources, the canines, the, the cameras, uh, the sensors, um, and even at times helicopters, when we have those resources, it allows us to be a lot more effective and we become a much more effective agency than what it was when I first entered the Border Patrol 22 years ago. And I will tell you, the lights went off on us January 20th of 2021. I would always argue that, that we have enough agents to secure the border if we have the proper policy. That was proven under the Trump administration. We had basically the same amount of agents as what we've got right now, and we were able to secure the border because we had the proper policy and the infrastructure. This is the wall that President Trump built. Um, extremely effective, except when it just ends right there and people can just walk right around it. This was done under the Trump administration, ended under President um, um, Biden, and there are several gaps that were left that just weren't filled in. And it was like a light switch. The Trump administration, they also struggled with illegal immigration. If you look at uh, 2019, President Trump, during that year, um, the Border Patrol apprehended more people than in any of the eight years under Obama. And that's simply because Obama gave the cartels the blueprints on how to game our system. And that just continued to escalate into President Trump's. When President Trump left office, by, uh, President Biden immediately stopped all construction on, on any of the fencing, any of the walls, um, which made this area a lot more vulnerable uh, to the illegal smuggling activity that we see taking place right now. And you can see right over here, this is where all of the materials, so th these materials are just sitting here waiting to be used. Um, they've been sitting here for over a year now, just sitting on the ground doing absolutely nothing um, to secure the border. These sections are ready to go up at any time, yet the Biden administration would rather just have it sit here on the ground rather than standing up and being a deterrent. If anybody's happy about the Biden administration policies, it's the criminal cartels. There's no question we were more supportive under President Trump, period. You know, it, um, it, it was interesting. I talked to some agents who were hired during his administration. They just happened, that's just when they happened to, to get hired. And for them to only have, say, a couple of years under that administration where they were treated with sort of respect and, and admired, to then transition over to a new administration where they feel that everybody hates them. It's outrageous. I promise you those people will pay. They will be an investigation underway now and there will be consequences. But it turns out after investigation, they weren't brandishing whips or deploying them against people. Those are reins used for controlling horses. But guess what? Now that no criminal wrongdoing has been found, we're not seeing a whole lot of corrections from the administration or frankly, the media. The problem is they, uh, they don't give us the resources to do the job. Uh, I mean, there, are, there will be days where we go by where we have zero agents in the field in an entire sector, except for the people driving the vans or the buses to pick up more people who just showed up. But more than anything, I would love to see the policies go back to what we have. You don't even have to do earth shattering stuff. Really all you need to do is just go back to the policies that, current, that were under President Trump when they took office, start there, and then we work from there to make it even better. Building the wall, we're paying for it. Let's continue to build it. Look, the wall is effective. It is not the end all be all. Nobody's ever claimed that that's it. It's a piece, a key piece of poor protecting your borders. So we need to finish the wall because we paid for it in the first place. I try to put myself in the shoes of people that are crossing like this. And if I'm in another country, and it's a terrible situation and I feel I have no other option, like I understand why they would want to leave. It's America, they want to come here. Makes sense. So it's, we're already pretty demoralized. You know, every day I wake up and I, I think, all right, let's see what happens today. Surely it won't be as bad as yesterday, but this is what it is. So morale is about as low as it could get. I keep saying that so it doesn't really mean much anymore. 
But when it happened, uh, agents already feel that the public doesn't really care about what the, about the job or the things that we do, the things that we do that are objectively good, a lot of the rescues and that sort of thing. You know, this is sort of the, I think, part of a growing trend in law enforcement in general. A lot of people are sort of just frustrated with the job. This, our mission is to protect the border. For those that are, that do take that pride in the fact that we can't do the job, it's, that, it's demoralizing and it's upsetting for everybody. You know, I, I still believe in the mission. I still believe in the job. Uh, as, as a union rep, I still believe in doing everything I can to help out the workforce because if we're not here to do it, I don't know who's going to help with things like that. You know, the average American, I think most Americans want people to come here and make a better life for themselves. None of us have a problem with that. I certainly do not have an issue with it. I encourage people to do it. I just encourage them to do it the correct way. I always say it shouldn't matter whether you're a Republican, a Democrat, or an Independent. If you do claim to care about human beings, then you should absolutely care about what's going on on the border. We're not going to raise the white flag. We're not quitters. That's not what we're going to do. This is, you know, we have, we have to respond to tough things all the time. So we would love their support, but at the same time, we're not going to let it stop us from, we're not going to sit over in the corner and cry about it either. We're going to continue to go out and put our badge on every day and, and fight the good fight. I, I worry, I'll just be honest with you, after 35 years of working in law enforcement, uh, a lot of our issues on this southwest border and beyond are right on the shoulders of members of Congress that are trying to erode the rule of law. When you police with politics, you police by opinions, you police with emotions, the rule of law will fail you every time. You get to work, you know? I mean, do your job. At the end of the day, that's. Republican, Democrat, somewhere in the middle, I don't care. I mean, I don't think most people care. I think most people are, are either left or right of center, right there in the middle. You guys need to learn to work together, get to work, and, and if you can't, move out and get somebody in there who, who can. I mean, the, the, there's issues on the table, and you guys aren't concerned about the issues on the table. You're concerned about what color hat you're wearing, and, and you gotta check that hat at the door, get in there, solve the problem, or, or get the hell out. It is a crisis. It's going to continue. You know, it puts a, a burden on this country, financially, every which way you want to look at it. I understand that people come to this country to find their, their dream, just like everybody else has. But there has to be limitations. There has to be rules that are followed. There has to be the right door that you enter. You don't enter through the back door. You have to come in the, the right way in order for things to be done. Everybody will get a shot if things are done right. The crisis on our southern border is very real, and it will take strong leadership, decisive action, and bipartisan cooperation to stem this crisis and keep our country safe.